Hey friends, welcome to The Unveil of this wonderful program called Leadership on Canvas, now in its sixth year. We're here to celebrate both this program, the program's leader, Cynthia Hagedorn, and the eight leaders who have painted this year. This is a program that connects us in ways that we never would have thought possible. I don't know about you who have painted, uh, but I was in 2018 when I painted and I was told I was nominated for this, I was immediately anxious and nervous about it. I hadn't done art since I was probably 18 years old. And in fact, uh, the next day, Bill Manns mentions to me that he was on the nominating committee and goes, hey, bro, brother, it's fine. You're gonna be okay. Just chill and enjoy and get into it. I thought, what does that mean? Hey, I wanna take this moment and mention a sister program that Cynthia also designed and implements in this community, which is called Care on Canvas. So you got Leaders on Canvas and now Care on Canvas. She's been doing this for years at Helen DeVos Children's Hospital, and she's now doing it at Mary Freebed with children. Children who are going through a hospital stay, it's a part of their rehabilitation. And so Mary Freebed sponsors this, Helen DeVos Children's Hospital has been sponsoring it for years. Uh, several physicians do, many in the community do. I know some of you do. Uh, Susan, my wife Susan and I do. And I just wanted to mention it because it's a, just an amazing program. And the only thing that's limiting that program is the amount of resources available to be able to enable, so she can enable the time to work with these kids. And so a bit of a shout out to any of you who are watching and are part of this to say, hey, please sponsor Care on Canvas. Now, here's how this works. There's eight on the nominating committee. I think she's painted now with maybe 60, some of us uh, leaders in the community. So there are eight of us and somehow I ended up on the nominating committee probably because I'm chatty and so is she. And so we talked a lot and then she got me on the nominating thing. Maybe it's because uh, Mike Verhulst, my buddy Mike and uh, Bill Manns are on the committee and Berger Close and a whole bunch of you community leaders are on this. So eight of us, we get to select who gets to do it. And there were a hundred nominations last year or so for this year and eight of you made it. So you had the opportunity to go out with this chicken hugger and paint, and we just want you to know how special you are. So that's what I, that's the shout out is to you for painting, but it's also to the eight people that selected you. I also want to give a real shout out to Mike Verholst at Rockford Construction for being the venue for this during our prize. I'm going to be there at Rockford and uh, can't wait to see it. Uh, Rockford has an amazing space. And Mike, thank you for providing the venue. Now, without further ado, I want to introduce the next person up who is the star of this show, besides the eight who painted this year, and that's Cynthia Hagedorn, our friend, our art artistic director, our teacher, and our favorite chicken hugger, Cynthia. Hi. I'm Cynthia Hagedorn, and I want to welcome you to Leadership on Canvas for Art Prize. This is our sixth iteration of this experience, and I'm excited to be able to present to you the eight leaders that have painted with me in my studio. But first, I would like to thank the team of Mary Freebed for all of their work that they have done for the production of this video. Matt Ferguson, who's been behind the camera, has absolutely been amazing to work with. Kent Riddle, who is one of my advisors. I'm so gracious for his participation, his collaboration, and his can-do attitude. I'd also like to thank the rest of my advising team, which has been two people from each year that has partnered with me to be able to help this program flourish. And they are Diana Seeger, Shelley Irwin, Daryl Ross, Rick Baker, Birgit Klaus, Jorge Gonzalez, Carlos Sanchez, Bill Manns, Mike Verholst, and of course, Kent Riddle. I'd like to thank all of them, as well as the past leaders that have painted with me to make this program what it is in the reflection of the community that we love. I would like to introduce to you, Emily Lux. Emily came into the studio, she was a little apprehensive, didn't exactly know what she wanted to paint. And as I saw her thinking and considering and pondering and really talking about her true commitment within the community, I 
I saw the colors, the ideas, everything fall into place. Her canvas executed beautifully. She has this, this sense of knowing what needs to be said through color, composition, and definitely through her spirit. Emily was wonderful to paint with, and I thoroughly enjoyed having her company. Hi, I'm Emily Lokes with Studio C, and I'm here for the unveiling of my canvas. I uh, just want to extend appreciation for the nominations that enabled me to get involved in this process. It's been some decades since I put paint on canvas, so uh, this, was, this was fun and a little nerve-wracking and a little bit vulnerable. So I want to also appreciate Cynthia for creating space. In our company, we talk about creating space where story happens and people's story happens, and she is a master at creating space that invites experimentation and vulnerability and uh, expression and so thank you for that so here is my canvas uh, in my undergraduate studies I studied um, ecology and communications and you may notice that organic shapes show up in this um, and I tend to think in ec ecological metaphors so a little bit of that comes through the root structure is really about that from which we draw our strength and draw resources. And this has been a year in which our company, Studio C, has been grateful for the 75 years of history that enabled us to weather a really turbulent and hard time. And we hope continuing and moving forward. But those relationships have been invaluable. And I, I love this um, image of roots and metaphor of roots. Um, it showed up um, in the wedding scripture that my husband and I chose, Ephesians 3, about being rooted in love. And then again, as a college student, I studied in Central Africa in the former country of uh, Zaire, doing work with community development and agriculture, and thought a bit about the roots of fruit trees because we were working with those. And there was this particular form of citrus tree, rough lemon, that was so well suited to the soil that it be grew very strong. And you could graft in grapefruit or orange or any other kind of citrus and it would be much more fruitful than even if it grew on its own roots. And so I think about using our strong roots and our history to help graft in others and that has being a giftedness. This central part is maybe most important to me. It's a seed pod structure. You'll note it holds a lot of solid colors, cool on one side, warm on the other. It feels like they're almost held in tension with each other. And that's something that I have felt a lot this past year, but always, is we hold important things in tension to move forward. In our company, we talk about valuing simplicity on the one side, but also collaboration, which is a little bit messy. We talk about pursuing the meaningful, but being playful and those things maybe feel like they are different, but they can coexist and uh, come into alignment sometimes. We talk about valuing relationships and trusted relationships, but also making the hard decisions. And sometimes it feels like that's held in tension, especially in a turbulent year. So um, when we successfully hold things together in tension, we make the best decisions. This is a year in which, you know, there was an airborne pandemic that we didn't know a lot about. And we're a company that exists to create public gathering spaces. The tensions are obvious. <laughs> and so when I've felt pain about that as a leader, and when others have come to me, you know, kind of almost anticipating anger or painful expression, it's been helpful for me to remember this hurts because this matters and this matters. And the way forward has to honor both of these things together and the choices we make have to like hold things in tension. Growing out of the top is maybe the most direct nod to the business in which I, which I operate, but I love story and I love arts and I love music. So we have here silver screens representing story. And stories are complex. Unlike the solid colors in the pod, they have gradations, complexity, and nuance to them. Warm and cool mixed together. And we've got the silver screen. So I believe, and maybe some of the best teachers and the best leaders throughout history, there have been many, have used story because they allow encounter and they allow an entry point that maybe 
we don't have as much resistance to as black and white or data or facts. We've learned this last year that people don't respond to data very well, but we do respond to encounter and story and experience. And those things build empathy. You know, they help us to see, to change and to move forward and, and recognize things that we need to honor in that movement. Um, so a lot of stuff that's both personal for me and connected with Studio C, this was a privilege to participate in and I'm so appreciative for the opportunity. Now I'd like to introduce to you Nelson Sanchez. Nelson was the first painter that came into the studio for this year's season and he walked in and he was like, okay, I kind of have a couple ideas of what I would like to do. And as we discussed some of his like personal situations with his family, we realized the connectedness that we both share um, with, I don't want to give too much of the information because he will explain it to you, but what an amazing man. I mean, he, he's deeply rooted in his thought, his convictions, the things that he has experienced in his life personally and professionally. And it was beautiful to sit and listen to him um, consider all of the different um, possibilities, the way he could execute his canvas, and then how it came together beautifully with such a deep message. I was truly proud of what he has accomplished. Hi, my name is Nelson Sanchez. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Roman Manufacturing. And uh, quite frankly, I'm thrilled and feel honored and humbled by this opportunity to participate in this Leadership on Canvas exercise. I, I knew nothing about it prior to my getting the email that I had been nominated to participate in this activity and didn't know what to think when I, when I got the email, but talked to a few people that had participated in, the, in this process and I got really uh, excited to, to be part of it. So I just wanna thank everyone in the nominating committee that put my name in, appreciate that, uh, thinking of me. And also wanna thank the artist coach, uh, Cynthia, for really teaching me what I could do or what I could uh, create. Uh, I thought this was gonna be a stick figure act, uh, exercise, because uh, that's about the extent of my artistic talents. So thank you, Cynthia. Thank you for the nominating committee. Also want to thank my wife for, for her great support uh, as I chatted with her about my thought process here as well and figuring out what uh, this uh, inspiration was going to be for my, uh, my painting. So uh, the inspiration for my painting today is, uh, is my dad and his battle with Alzheimer's that uh, ended obviously uh, tragically, but uh, the, the picture reflects my time with him and our journey together through his disease. And so what we have here is uh, kind of the thought process of the emotions, the emotional cycle, the person with the disease and those around him go through as a result of the uh, deterioration so over here, obviously, before the disease sets on, life is good, skies are blue, things are good. As the disease starts to uh, take over the individual, you can, you can see through a series of emotions, the red signifying a lot of the anger and frustration that people experience, both uh, the caregiver and the individual themselves. And then there's parts as the disease progresses where uh, with the color purple, which is the, the color for the Alzheimer's logo, picking up on that, the everything in, in purple signifies the, the disease really uh, setting in and taking hold. And then there's periods of, of bright spots and clear uh, clearness and clarity where the individual starts uh, uh, for, you know, forgetting. Uh, and as the disease progresses, they, they actually have moments of lucidity and, and clarity. And so that's uh, tried to depict there in the middle. And then as the, as the disease continues to progress and take over, 
things start to get black and dark. And then obviously here, this sharp line is the end of life and uh, of, of my dad. And uh, this part from the, from the sharp line over is really the, my journey as uh, I then continued uh, post Alzheimer's with, with my dad. Uh, you know, some, some yellow, sun, sunny, hopeful insights, obviously going through what I think a, a normal person's journey is in life with good times and bad times. And uh, a lot of blank canvas, which is just unfinished work. Uh, my work's not done yet, but in the, and my life isn't done yet, but in the background always looming is this, this line, which is purple. And that is uh, the, the disease always lurks in the background in your mind of um, that that potentially uh, could be growing in me at some future uh, time. So the fear of the disease is always there, looming in your background. And, but there is hope and there's a future. And so that's kind of the, the way I captured my years with my dad. And then after his passing, uh, the things that have been on my mind associated with this uh, dreaded Alzheimer's disease. Now I get to introduce Maggie Lancaster. And whereas this is probably going to take me a few times to be able to get through this because I do get a little emotional when I talk about Maggie. She has been a champion for children's programming and experiences in play for the community, she's an amazing woman. And to have the experience to be able to sit with her and paint, I can tell you it's been one of the best experiences. Bringing you back to Maggie, and I do want to share this, is that Maggie was the one that helped me launch all kinds of children's programming. And had it not been for her even, this program, this Leadership on Canvas wouldn't have happened. Way back when, Maggie, asked me to help her with Kids Art Fest for the Children's Museum. We launched that, we launched other children's programming. She's been a partner for Care on Canvas, an artist in residence with Helen DeVos Children's Hospital, and so many more things. With those experiences, looking at Art Prize, I wanted to make a different type of impact, bringing in community leaders to be able to talk about their experience with Art Prize from a perspective of an artist. Because of Kids Art Fest, I was able to work with community leaders and therefore ask them to participate, participate in this program. So if it hadn't been for Maggie asking me, this program would have happened. And I'm so grateful. So when Maggie came to the, into the studio, we sat back and talked and, and talked about all the past situations that we've been in and experiences and her, her complete devotion towards kids and play and everything that I believe in was present in her painting. She's the most amazing, loving, kind, committed woman I've ever met. And I'm grateful for that experience. Hi, I'm Maggie Lancaster and I am the proud CEO at the Grand Rapids Children's Museum. I wanted to thank whoever did nominate me for this wonderful opportunity and a huge shout out to Cynthia Hagedorn who really had me um, going at the very beginning of Art Prize uh, when we had the mural um, installed uh, and took second place in the first ever Art Prize. I remember asking uh, Rick DeVos, how can we get children more involved? And he says, well, I'm gonna leave that one up to you, Maggie. So I reached out to Cynthia and the next year we started our first ever Kids Art Fest. And so that, what a great memory I had with Cynthia. And here we are many, many years later, still working with Art Prize. So thank you to Cynthia. Thank you to Art Prize. This is really exciting. So art is not in my realm at all, but we provide a ton of it at opportunities of artwork at the Grand Rapids Children's Museum. So here is my um, reveal. And that is basically my fingers. So Cynthia made me feel comfortable enough to dab all 10 of my fingers in acrylic and have at it. Now everyone seems to be asking, 
what in the world is in the middle, and I don't know. Um, about right here, I think I started drinking too much sangria and I got bored and so I just stopped there. Um, but really the fingers is all about, we are all about the hands-on at the Children's Museum, hands-on open-ended play. But the bottom line is we would never be able to provide hands-on open-ended play without all of your hands and your fingers involved in it. So I am just very, very grateful to have this opportunity to work with incredible people and to share my art that is all about hands coming together. Hi, it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Mark Herman as the 2021 leader on the Lakeshore. I first met Mark back in uh, 1996, and I have to say, I think he's the smartest man I ever met because he actually hired me for my job um, as the director of the Holland Area Visitors Bureau. And since that time, Mark has served as a mentor not only to me, but to the hospitality industry in Holland, to his staff, his restaurant patrons, and community members. In 1997, after working in the hotel restaurant side of the, the industry, Mark decided to open his own restaurant, the Crazy Horse Steakhouse and Saloon, located on the north side of Holland. It was there that a patron uh, one night pinned a dollar bill onto one of the wooden walls of the, um, the booth he was sitting in. And this caught on and Soon, patrons were pinning dollar bills. Sometimes they would write messages on them. But all of a sudden, the walls of the Crazy Horse Steakhouse and Saloon were filled with dollar bills. Um, and some people pinned them on just because. Well, in, when 9-11 uh, hit, Mark knew that this was the time for him to give back to the community. So he took all of those dollar bills down and donated them to help the victims of 9-1-1. After that, um, Mark, the, the dollar bills continued to appear on the walls. So Mark made it a point to give back to the community, to people in need, to people with health issues, to people facing all sorts of crises. And to date, Mark Herman and the Crazy Horse Steakhouse have donated close to a half a million dollars back to the community and to helping those who need it. Okay, I just want to hijack this a little bit. I know that Sally has just given him this introduction, but I had to say a few things because I had such a great experience with him, and I wanted to share that when he came in, he was the most humble, thoughtful, loving man, and had a couple ideas with his canvas, and as we went through and talked about technique and ideas, he just flourished. And I'm proud that he is from the Lakeshore and that he's representing the Lakeshore because this man has given back so much to the community and I'm grateful that I had the experience of painting with him. My name is Mark Herman and I own the Crazy Horse Steakhouse in Holland, Michigan. And I've owned the restaurant for 25 years and this is my unveiling. And this represents our story at the Crazy Horse. First, I wanna thank Sally for nominating us and certainly Cynthia uh, for getting this out of me. It's basically two shapes. It's a triangle and then a circle in the middle of the triangle. The triangle represents the employees at the Crazy Horse. Circle represents our fundraising efforts. In order to describe the triangle, which is our operating philosophy, I'm going to turn it upside down. And now it's a regular triangle, which represents a company's normal hierarchy or organizational chart. The organizational chart will have the CEO or the owner at the top, middle management, and the employees at the bottom. Not at the Crazy Horse. At the Crazy Horse, it's an upside down triangle. At the top are the customers. At the top are the employees. Then middle management, and then the CEO or the owner of the Crazy Horse. I'm at the bottom of the triangle. I'm at the bottom of the hierarchy chart. 
I have the least amount of influence on the customers. I painted this a little darker because it represents the customers and the employees because the employees have the most effect on guest satisfaction. Our role as management and owner is to provide for the employees. We're supposed to provide for the employees a great working environment. We're supposed to provide for the employees a, um, an environment where they can flourish, where they can be successful, where they can be the best version of themselves. And that's a role that we take very seriously and hopefully we live by it every single day. So that's the first shape of it. The second shape is the circle within the triangle and that's our fundraising efforts. Fundraising uh, is basically we have dollars on the walls. And um, I know that most companies do fundraising uh, and that's great, uh, but I think ours is a little bit unique and uh, ours actually started organically. Many years ago, a customer put pinned a dollar on the wall and it took off from there. Since then, many years, there's been hundreds of thousands of dollars on the wall donated to local charities. And our customers know that. So now what happens is the customers will actually write messages, special events, birthdays, anniversaries on the dollar. They'll pin the dollars on the wall because they know that we're gonna donate them to local charities. So that's half the circle is the connection with our customers. Uh, once the dollar goes up on the wall, now we have a personal connection with our customers between the restaurant and the customer. The other half of the circle, closing the circle is taking those dollars off the wall and giving them to the community. And that's become our story. And that's why it's a circle, because it connects us to our customers and it connects us to our community. And therefore that represents our story at the Crazy Horse. Thank you. Now I would like to introduce to you, Mark Washington. And Mark, ah, oh, he was so much fun. Mark came in with his wife and um, walked around the studio trying to figure out what's going to happen, what he's going to paint. He had a few ideas. Next thing you know, he just took off and he, he started executing his painting and he knew what he was going to do. And I thought, I'm getting out of his way. So he just had such an amazing way of looking at the canvas, talking about his experiences and putting it beautifully in color on a canvas. It was a pleasure to be with him, and I loved his wife. Hello, my name is Mark Washington. I'm city manager for the city of Grand Rapids, and I appreciate being part of Leadership on Canvas. Leadership off, camp off Canvas is what I'm most familiar with, and it requires courage and boldness. And I want to thank Cynthia for helping me to transfer uh, some of the leadership courage and boldness for uh, trying to exert my influence in an area where I'm typically not comfortable uh, leading in public, and that is in displaying my own personal art. And uh, Cynthia was such a great coach and professional and uh, gave me the confidence and courage uh, to be part of uh, this legacy event with uh, many other Grand Rapidians. And so today my art is personal, like many others, and it is my view of the world and how I think during these very difficult times as we try to uh, move our country, our community forward um, with all the issues around social equity uh, using a equitable lens. And so my painting was inspired by the way I think we need to step back and incorporate a different inclusive view of our community and society. So hence, uh, the unveiling of the equity lens. And you will see that the background is, is the blue sky and the blue opportunity and the blue um, dreams of many people, but centered with the eye. And from my perspective, as an African-American, I use the Pan-African flag, the flag that embodies uh, a um, African view of, of, 
of ancestry with the red, black, green. The red being uh, blood of ancestors, the black for the people who were indigenous to the continent of Africa, and the green for the land. And using that lens in viewing uh, from an African-American perspective, the many opportunities that are available in uh, the United States, but with the tears, the red tears that uh, are uh, painted on the canvas of uh, the times in which those opportunities were not realized were for one reason or another because of disparities, because of inequities, because of discrimination and racism, but yet having the courage to still look forward into the future and to uh, do it so with confidence that one day this, this country will realize the meaning of its constitution and, and many other aspirations of, of equality and being hopeful. So hence, uh, the equity lens. Again, thank you, Cynthia, for helping me with my opportunity to, to, to share this with, with our community and many others. And uh, I also want to thank my, my wife who was there holding my hand uh, figuratively, not literally. She did not uh, uh, offer any strokes on, on the canvas. But uh, thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy it. Now I'd like to introduce to you Ashley Lee. Ashley came into the studio and it was just like on fire. She was energetic and happy and walked in. I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, I instantly loved her the second she walked in. And she said, she's like, I have some ideas about one of the things I wanted to do. And we talked about different ways of executing it. And usually what I do is I have them put things on paper and I kind of have the story picture in my mind and we'll work through this. The next thing you know, she was navigating it and she was putting it on the canvas. and. I mean, boom, it was there. And it, it was so much fun to be able to spend the time with her and laugh and talk, and it was just great. She's a wonderful human being. Hello, I am Ashley Renee Lee, and I am the Vice President of Strategic Communications at Grand Rapids Community Foundation. Um, I am just so honored and excited to be a part of this year's Leadership on Canvas exhibit as a part of Art Prize 2021. Um, want to definitely give a, a big, huge thank you to um, those who nominated me and um, you know, really thought enough of, of me and my leadership and impact in our community to, to write my name down as an option for this. Um, especially want to thank my boss, Diana Seeger. Thank you for your leadership and mentorship. Um, our community is better because you're here. Um, also want to thank Angela Nelson, also one of the past participants in this program, who is a dear friend, um, mentor, and sorority sister. So thank you so much, Angela. Um, and definitely want to be sure to thank my family just for um, their continued support and encouragement along my leadership journey. Um, they, I know that they are always there cheering me along and um, sharing hard truths and um, positive affirmations. So thank you to them. Um, and also, also want to thank our community um, for giving me the opportunity to lead and um, in different phases and stages of my life. I've learned so much from you and it is my honor and privilege to serve you. So now to my artwork. Um, I will unveil my masterpiece here. Let's see. All right, so this is my piece and um, really want to thank Cynthia for just taking the time and um, patience to sit with me and get to know me and to help, help me kind of bring out this artistic expression of my leadership. And I'm just so excited that you have welcomed me into your home and um, definitely am excited to now know you and for all that you poured into me during our time together. Um, so as I talked with Cynthia about um, just me and my leadership style and some of the lessons and experiences that I've had along the way, one of the things that really continued to resonate with me was yellow. Yellow has been my favorite color since I was a little girl. And um, when I think about yellow, I think one of the reasons that I love it so much is because it's bold. Um, it's fun and it's optimistic, right? Um, and so when I think about my leadership, those are all things that 
I really hold near and dear. I try to be bold and unapologetic in showing up authentically and speaking up for things um, that I feel need to be brought to the table for discussion. Um, I am definitely trying to bring us some fun flavor and flair to my leadership because why not, right? Um, and also optimism. I think that um, the optimistic part of, of my life and the hopes and visions that I have for our community um, are really what keeps me going. And so that is a, a really central part of my leadership. And so that for me is depicted through this yellow. Um, and then you'll see the different textures and tones and things because I think that there's there are ebbs and flows of that in different phases and stages of life and in leadership. Um, and then you'll see over here, um, we have some different colors and elements and just un, um, I would say elements that you are unpredictable, right? And I think our journey in leadership is really unpredictable. And for me, this demonstrates that. And while it's unpredictable and it can kind of throw wrenches in our plans and distract us from our vision, um, there's a lot of lessons that are learned along the way. And so I really see it as like this beautiful chaos that really helps make our story and our journeys unique. Um, sometimes our goals change and shift. Sometimes the players, um, you know, shift and change. And so for me, that's what is depicted here. And so, but in spite of that, at the end of the day, we're still anchored in this, you know, this this boldness, this um, this fun and, and vibrancy, and also um, this optimism for the hopes and visions that we have for our our community and um, for our own journeys and leadership. So this is my piece. And again, just super excited to be able to have this artistic expression about what my leadership has been, especially in West Michigan. And just thanks again to everyone who's a part of this. Um, I am really honored and privileged to have been able to participate. So. I would like to introduce to you Chris Andrews. Chris came into the studio and, you know, we've had a lot of challenges because of hospitality with all of the, with COVID and the pandemic. And he's gone through quite a bit and there have been a lot of challenges, you know, surrounding that. And he really wanted to get a lot of thought and ideas and concept into this canvas. And when he walked in, he had a bit of an idea of what he wanted to do. He sat down, he was kind and humble and had forethought and it was such a great experience to sit and listen to him with all of the the experience that he went through during the pandemic and then to be able to execute it onto a canvas and get those thoughts out and what he wanted to say but it was such a delight to be able to sit and listen to him and talk to him and i'm so happy that things are going well for him and it was a joy to be able to be with him. Hello, my name is Chris Andrus. I'm the co-owner of the Mitten Brewing Company and founder of Mitten Foundation. I'm not sure exactly who nominated me, but to whomever it was, thank you so much. I'm so incredibly honored to be included among such leaders and um, influential people in Michigan and in our town. So I'm truly humbled, thank you so much. So as far as my painting, it was a great experience. It was an unexpected experience. I enjoyed art and I studied it in college, but to tell you the truth, I haven't drawn or painted anything in more than a decade. So I wasn't sure if I had any ability left or if it had gone completely away. So I sort of went into it blind, hoping that the mood would take me somewhere and it did. That was a conscious choice. I decided not to prepare or worry about it in any way and just put my trust in Cynthia. Uh, so we had a long discussion before we painted anything. We talked about COVID and the trials and tribulations and what it was like to run a business in an art studio. And I spoke candidly with her about my depression and anxiety, which was heightened during the pandemic and was honestly pretty high during the day that I painted with her. So um, I just had two colors in my mind. I had this yellow ochre sort of color and a, and a dark, dark tone of black or a dark brown. And I think the black was representing the darkness that I was feeling and the yellow represented the sun or the brightness trying to shine through. Uh, and as you can see from the finished piece, the black dominates. And that's how I felt at that point in time. And I'm happy to say that now 
you know, a month or so later, the the sun is starting to shine through a little bit more. So um, it was very much a slice of life for what I was feeling at that point in time. I'd like to thank Cynthia for inspiring me and guiding me through the process and my wife, Shannon, and sons, August and Jude, for all the time and encouragement they've given me through the years and to everyone who has supported or patronized the mitten and our foundation in any way. Thank you. I'm excited to be able to present and introduce Carol Van Andel. It was a delight to paint with her. She came in and had a couple of different concepts and sat with me and I showed her a couple of techniques. She knew, she knew what to do. And I, I loved hearing her stories about her community, her experiences, everything related back to that, especially her family and the wisdom that this woman has been able to share and give to our community has been profound. And it was my privilege to be able to sit with her and have her paint, her beautiful painting. Hello everyone, I'm Michael Verhalst, Vice President of Rockford Construction. Well, I've had the distinct privilege of working alongside Cynthia when I was the chair of the Grand Rapids Chamber's Board of Directors in 2018. I had an incredible time and really enjoyed that experience while painting for her leadership on canvas that year. Cynthia and I have remained business colleagues and really friends ever since. I truly enjoyed working with her and learning from her about myself professionally, but also personally. I will continue to support Leadership on Canvas because of how it positively impacts really everyone who's involved with it. Throughout our corporate offices located on First Street on the west side of Grand Rapids, we have numerous pieces of artwork for our team to enjoy. It only seems fitting that we are fortunate to be able to host Leadership on Canvas this year at our building. So at this time, I would like to invite all of you to visit our venue to see the newly revealed paintings as they were all been created by our own wonderful business leaders. I would like to thank each of you for your support of all the artists that are engaged with our prize, but I especially would like to thank you for your support of Leadership on Canvas United. Entitled United for all the reasons you can imagine coming out of 2020. Art just simply has a wonderful way of reducing and removing barriers that we face every day. Cynthia, thank you for all you've done and continue to do. And to all of you, thank you for all your support. And I really hope to see you while the paintings are being revealed.